Welcome back. So this is our concluding session of uh, this year's amazing summit. I think you will hopefully agree with me uh, that uh, we have been provided uh, with uh, a lot of inspiration uh, and a lot to, to think about. Um, and to discuss where we go next towards uh, 2023 and beyond, as uh, we entitled this uh, session, I'm very pleased uh, to welcome back on stage Professor Katrin Amons, the Scientific Research Director of the HPP, and Professor Jan Bialy, the Infrastructure Development uh, Director. Um, I have to say that I'm very grateful to both Katrin and Jan for doing uh, such an impressive job in shaping this program over the past uh, two days of our scientific conference. Uh, but I'm also grateful for the spirit uh, with which we have worked together over the past uh, year and a half uh, since I joined the project. Uh, now, I would like to ask you to start with, um, when you think about 2023, and then when you think about the period uh, beyond, um, what is your dream? Um, what can we hope to achieve uh, within the next two years and what we can achieve uh, in, the next, uh, in the next period? Uh, what is your hope and expectation? Katrin, please. Well, I think the HPP has pushed the boundaries of knowledge on one of the last greatest mysteries in science that is the brain. And I hope that the new insights into the brain and the instruments that we have created will revolutionize brain medicine and research. And eBrains is a platform that brings it together. Similar to the CERN, which enabled breakthroughs in particle physics, we want to achieve the same for brain and brain-related science. And similar to CERN, a large multidisciplinary effort of researchers and stakeholders across whole Europe that has been necessary and will do so in the future. I see the digital twin as a central concept that will significantly change brain research and medicine as it does for technology fields where it has been present for a longer time. And we are still lacking important insights in brain research. For example, on the interplay of electrical and chemical mechanisms of signal transduction at the level of synapses, the formation of memory and consciousness or the relevance for brain architecture for supporting a concrete cognitive function, to name only a few of many more. And while empirical research is powerful to analyze the brain and elucidate its components, we also need an integrative approach, a synthesis that will result in new concepts and theories. For example, digital twins and possible generalizations of the concept could help to continuously update our models by experimental data towards a deeper understanding of the brain. Presently, such loops are not yet well established and the time that is needed for updates is much too long. Using digital twins, we could test, for example, in a virtual environment before clinical trials start, how drugs are interacting with the brain and the whole body. Furthermore, Twins could be used to model neurosurgery based on individual patient data. And first steps have been done in the Human Brain Project towards that direction. And a clinical trial in France is ongoing for epilepsy surgery. I hope that in some years we will be able to improve on the fly such models using information collected during surgery to assist surgeons to make the right decisions. Finally, if we could use the specialized brain architecture and other more general neuroscience ideas to drive the development of artificial neuronal networks and future computing systems, we could potentially arrive to breakthroughs in pure technology areas as well. Thank you so much, uh, Katrin, and I'm, I'm really glad that you uh, took this into the area of application huh? because the sequence of, of the project indicates that uh, basic science uh, needs to be followed by uh, the application um, uh, in the clinical environment in, in particular, but also application in, in, uh, in technology. Now, Jan, when you look into the crystal ball uh, and you see 2023, you see the period beyond, uh, what's, the, what's the hope and what's, uh, what's the challenge that you see there? 
Yes, it is uh, perhaps necessary to have some dreams, definitely some hopes, but also some realistic expectations. And uh, I'd like to summarize it uh, with two short sentences, uh, one for the infrastructure itself and one for neuroscience in general. For the infrastructure, simply being connected with the surroundings, a two-way dialogue is absolutely critical. Uh, for the neuroscience, I have kind of the idea that it needs to stand on two feet I'll explain that in a moment. But for the infrastructure, existing in an environment, just like a brain exists in an environment, it doesn't have a meaning if it doesn't exist in an environment, it's the same with the research infrastructure. So my expectation is obvious, that there is a one-way communication on pushing out what the research infrastructure can do, influencing neuroscience and brain research and globally, but equally important to take back be challenged by the progress in the field and the new needs. This is absolutely essential, this dynamic uh, aspect. And how do we achieve this? By systematically continuing to improve and extend our services beyond the level needed to publish some papers. They need to be much more robust so that they can be taken up by, by, by other researchers, as we are seeing for many services today. This is a trend that needs to continue and be strengthened and will also lead, I believe, to more, more feedback and um, communication with the field around us, which is already happening, but should continue. In the longer term perspective, let's say five years, 10 years, I hope actually shorter. I expect to see, and I hope to see some transformation in the way we do neuroscience. And I'm seeing future leading scientists standing on two feet, one feet in one camp in the most creative, flexible research designs. Another one in a more standardized research design aimed at systematic mapping of features in the brain, allowing data to be maybe directly submitted to a curation, if we take it to that level of detail, to a sharing uh, uh, driven by scientific questions. So why these two aspects? Well, the first is where everything is essentially coming from. If you don't have the creativity, if you don't have the flexibility, you can't really move forward, you can't test out new things. So we need that and we, we want to have it as much as possible. Then we need to take the best of that, the methods that are really very well validated. And then we also need to work more systematically with them. And here we need a research infrastructure, the creativity, the open <laughs> research designs will need it as well. But when we scale up the effort, standardize it more, then this becomes really powerful. And here we have a huge competitive possibility in the future. I like to see us exploiting it. And I think all the services or service groups we have at the moment is, is a great start. And these principles, I think, apply to these different type of things we are on the track of developing. Thank you very much, uh, Jan. So, uh, I like the way you phrased this in terms of um, continuing what we do, but uh, making sure that we are responsive to, to new developments and, uh, and the demand coming from the researchers, uh, that we are open to be challenged. Um, and how you see um, something along the lines of a paradigm shift taking place in the medium to long term uh, period and how a research infrastructure can help to cater for that. Uh, so let me very briefly answer my own question as well uh, with regards to uh, both 23 and beyond. So institutionally, uh, what um, we are undertaking right now is a transition from uh, a flagship project into a research infrastructure. What this would uh, take uh, is um, for this infrastructure to be genuinely distributed. Um, that is um, to have national nodes providing the services and gathering the scientific communities around them because one needs to rhyme uh, with the others, uh, with the other science is and will always be at the heart of uh, eBrains. Uh, so we will have uh, from seven to 10 national nodes, I would expect by 2023. I hope that we would have uh, something along the lines of 17 to 20 nodes by 2025. At least that's the direction of, uh, of travel. Uh, we need to be as close as we can be to uh, the scientific communities. Um, and, uh, and that is to be done through 
uh, denotes. We are not reinventing the wheel here, by the way. This is how research infrastructures in Europe uh, function. So that's my first point. The second, the second point is that we need an agenda that is um, ambitious and inclusive at the same time. So we need to set ourselves ambitious goals and uh, and not be fearful about it. Sometimes, sometimes we are. Sometimes we. Uh, we hold back uh, because we think uh, that the scientific objective might be too ambitious for, for where we are. But, uh, but we need to overcome that, but at the same time remain inclusive. Um, and the way that I would see that uh, it's being expressed, uh, again, institutionally, is through uh, the creation of the Science and Technology Board of eBrains, uh, which should materialize in the course of next uh, year. Now, thirdly, a research infrastructure will have proven its value when it, uh, when it helps uh, to tackle key problems uh, in neuroscience, uh, in brain health and in technology. So we need to be responsive to what we see as the, as the key problems and we need to throw our efforts and resources in that uh, direction. Uh, and with that in mind, I think uh, we have a fascinating uh, journey ahead of us and eBrains uh, which is um, shaped and uh, powered by the Human Brain Project um, should be an enabler for these types of uh, new horizons. Um, with that in mind, I would like to uh, thank everyone for uh, attending this uh, annual summit of uh, the Human Brain Project. Um, we have had fascinating discussions. They will be uh, available online very soon on the website if you would like to go through the experience uh, again. I think it's very much uh, worth it. Uh, let me thank everyone who has been involved uh, in uh, organizing the summit and the program committee, the organizing committee, uh, lots of people who have helped to, to make sure uh, that this has been such a tremendous uh, success. Um, our speakers, our participants, um, a big thank you to uh, all of you. Um, and so I hope you will agree with me that we are now beginning to look forward to the 2022 annual summit of the Human Brain Project. Uh, in the meantime, safe travels to those uh, who need to go home and uh, thank you very much for your attention and for your active participation. Thank you.